I'm Yerdra. I'm in recovery from codependency and chaos creating, and I'm really grateful to share with you guys today. Um, the title of this talk comes from a verse in Romans 13 that I read last week, and I was like, whoa, this is basically the whole ethos of Life Lab and the 12 steps right here in one verse. So I'm going to read it for you guys, and then I'll just talk about what it's meant to me so far. Um, I'll go a little farther. There's a lot of good stuff in Romans. Um, so this is Romans 13, 8. Oh, no one anything except to love each other. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know the time that the hour has come for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. The night is far gone, the day is at hand. So then, let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the daytime, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and sensuality, not in quarreling and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. Um, so I think this is a really beautiful passage in showing like the like the light that God hopes for us and the, the life that he wants for us. Um, and I'm just going to focus particularly on verse 8. Um, the first thing that I thought about was owing no one anything. And that for me is a big part of sobriety. Um, as a person who tends towards codependency and creating chaos, I have a history of making promises that I can't keep. Um, of like over committing to people and then not being able to follow through on those commitments because I don't have enough time as I thought I did. I don't have the energy that I thought I did. Um, and I also have a history of over committing to the wrong people. Um, not that there are wrong people in life, but committing more to the people um, that aren't in my inner sphere. Like I would commit to people who or not my family, when actually my family needed my attention. Um, I would commit to um, people who were my acquaintances as opposed to my close friends who I had committed to previously. Um, but I, I, I knew that I was doing this, so then I would spend a lot of time rushing around trying to catch up to the things I committed to do um, and spend a lot of time and emotional energy feeling ashamed and guilty when I couldn't actually follow through on all the things that I said I would do for people. Um, so I didn't live in financial debt, but I lived in like time debt and energy debt and the debt of like attention and, and commitment to people. Um, and part of me really loved the like the high of that the like oh if I plan all my day exactly correctly then I can get all these 16,000 things done and everybody will be happy and I'll be happy um and it felt really good to do a lot of things for a lot of people and it made me feel like yeah I I am worth something I can do things for people if I do these things for people then they'll like me and we'll be okay and I'll be okay um but the other part of me really hated like feeling behind all the time and knowing that I was letting people down, whatever I did, like if I, I would overcommit always. And so whatever I tried to do for people, then I never, it never was, never was enough for me or, or for the people that I was with. Um, so for me then, um, owing, knowing, owing no one anything, like living in sobriety, means that if I say I will do something for somebody, I will do it as soon as I can. And that seems like a really simple concept, but actually it's been a lot of work to be able to do that. Um, like I realized, I told people I would give them things for Christmas and I still haven't given them their Christmas presents and it's February. And so it's not yet, actually, it's March today. <laughs> um, so so it, it creeps back very easily and 
I think that's because I still am not quite living in reality sometimes. I, I live in the reality where I think, oh, here are all the things that I have time for and all the things I'd like to do for people. And then I say, yeah, sure, these all these things. Or um, it's not a matter of reality. It's a matter of selfishness. Like I said, I do these things for people, but I'm tired today. And really what I think I need to do is go lie in my bed and read this book. Or what I really need to do is go watch this TV show. And the, like my own, um, my own self and my own needs and my own feelings becomes more important than the thing that I said I would do. Um, but I want to be a reliable and a stable person for the people in my life. I don't want people to like leave a conversation with me and wonder, oh, will Deirdre actually do that thing she said she would? I don't know. Um, I don't want people like not to be able to rely on me when it's important. And so what that means for me is that I think more carefully about what I commit to. So I, I do say, let me think about that for a minute. Like, I'll get back to you tomorrow. And I, I go away and I think about it. And once the rush of like being happy to be needed subsides, then I can say, okay, yeah, I can do that this week. I have room here in my schedule. Or I say, actually, I'm sorry. Like this week is kind of busy for me and I've already had these other commitments and maybe somebody else could help you or maybe you could do this next time. Um, somebody did this for me. It was a few years back before I even started my recovery, but she was a friend who sewed and I asked her, could you make me a laptop case for my new laptop? And she said yes, and we agreed on a price. And then she came back to me two weeks later and she was like, Deirdre, I'm sorry, I cannot make your laptop case. <laughs> I actually have taken on too many things right now and it's not gonna work right now. And I was really grateful because she did it promptly and she did it like, owning her responsibility for over committing. And I didn't want her to have to stay up till 3 a.m. making me a laptop case <laughs> when she could be sleeping. Like, so it was, that was really, that was a really beautiful moment for me and thinking, oh, even if I have over committed, I can also come back and apologize and own my side of the street and say, like, this isn't going to work for me. And I'm, I'm working on this, but I've over committed to you again. Um, so, and the last thing I was thinking about in terms of owing nothing, knowing, owing nobody anything was in the realm of amends. Um, I've been pretty slow to make my amends since finishing Lifetab. They kind of like trickled out of me. Um, but reading this verse and talking with my pace setter, I realized it's kind of like the same thing as not following through on your commitments, not to make people amends. Like it's the same realm of like kind of feeling uncomfortable and guilty and behind. And I don't want to live there. God doesn't want me to live there either. And like we, the, the big book talks about clearing your side of the street and being responsible for that. And I think I owe people a clean street insofar as it's my capacity to clean it. And they can clean their half or not, but I'm responsible for, for my side. And I, and I owe that to people who I love or who I've had relationship with um, because God's put them in my life. Um, so th those are all the things I was thinking about um, in terms of owing nobody anything. And then the next part of the verse is except to love each other. And that's a really fun part of this verse, I think. And that's what makes it worth it. All of the like going back and paying debts and having uncomfortable conversations and being really, really aware of what's real and what's not real. Um, and that this part of the verse made me think of it's in the life lab workbook but it's also from the big book and i'll just read it now um it goes like this we must now continue to make personal inventory and continue to set right 
any new mistakes as we go along. We vigorously commenced this way of living as we cleared up the past. We have entered the world of the spirit. Our next, fu next function is to grow in understanding and effectiveness. This is not an overnight matter. It should continue for our lifetime. Continue to watch for selfishness, dishonesty, resentment, and fear. When these crop up, we ask God at once to remove them. We discuss them with someone immediately and make amends quickly if we have harmed, harmed anyone. Then we resolutely turn our thoughts to someone we can help. Love and tolerance of others is our code. And it strikes me that there's such a lot of freedom in there. Like it sounds like a lot of work and it is a lot of work, but it is, it's the real deal. Like I thought that being everybody, anything to everybody and doing things for people would help me feel safe and secure and free. But really it just got me in this cycle of shame and guilt and tiredness. And I did all these things for people, not because I really loved them, um, but because I wanted them to owe me back. <laughs> like I wanted something out of them. Um, and that's not love. Like love is a gift and a decision to do something for somebody's good, not out of compulsion or out of wanting anything back, um, but, but free from selfishness. And I'm kind of starting to see that these days and to be able to say yes to what is good for people and good for me and good for God. That's what real freedom actually is. And it's way more worthwhile and satisfying and, and good as a life than trying to love people so that I can get what I need out of it. Um, God is a person who can take care of my needs. And he will probably do it through other people who do really love me. Um, and, and that's a beautiful place to be. Um, it can sound like Paul and God and Life Lab and the big book is commanding the impossible. Like, you must love people. Make yourself feel a particular way about all these people. Um, and the beautiful thing there is that you don't really have to feel a particular way about anybody in order to love them. Like you can, it's nice when you're like, oh, and I like you as well. But love is just doing what is a good thing for this person. It's like an, it's an action and a choice. And all through the 12 steps, you, you talk about like, well, what, what is it? How do I be right with this person? How do I be right with God? And, and those are just things that you do. And sometimes the feelings come afterwards and sometimes it's just a discipline and you do it <laughs> and, and you feel the fruit for yourself afterward. Um, and the other thing is that God, I, I can't actually love people. Like I can't be like, yes, I will choose to do this thing for your good and your benefit instead of choosing to do it out of selfishness by myself. I, I tried for a long time and God, is actually the person who lets me do that and his power is good for that and his authority is good for that and he's not asking me to do something all by myself he's saying love people like oh no oh nobody anything except love and i'm the one who will help you to do that like a dad helps his kid learn how to tie their shoelaces like we'll do it together um and that's also really freeing and and less scary than being like, okay, now I must love all the people. Um, yeah, and you know, I was always very tired. Like we talk about needing a break. I was always, I always needed a break from my life, from doing all the things for all the people and like trying to love the people and doing things for people I needed a break from it. Like I needed to go lie in my bed and read a novel or get away to the woods all by myself. And as I live more and more in the the philosophy, like owe nothing to anybody except love, like that becomes energizing in itself. I don't need a break as much. I still get tired, but the like 
now I need to get away from everything like that has really decreased. And so I'm excited to see how God continues to give me, to fill my needs and give me the energy that I need um, as we, as we keep doing this together. And as, as he shows me more and more what it really looks like to love people and be free.